So if you're like me and you're at the store where there's a good meat section and you're perusing it, walking by, taking a look at everything, every once in a while, something catches your eye. And that's what happened today. I saw these. These are some beef chuck short ribs with insane marbling. These are prime, but that marbling is just crazy. So I grabbed them. I'm gonna get them rubbed up tonight and then tomorrow we're gonna smoke these up out on the SNS Grills kettle. So let's just get started here. Now, I usually don't use a binder. I've, I say that almost all the time. I think usually meat has enough moisture, but this is pretty dry. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce on here just as a binder. Not gonna need a lot, just a little bit on each one and I'll rub them all around. This is an organic Worcestershire sure, sure, sure sauce. Worcester sauce, we'll just get in here, give everybody a good rub, roll them over. Yeah, this is just one of those totally impromptu videos. I was not planning to do this, but these just looked incredible when I saw them. I mean, just fantastic marbling everywhere. We'll just get some of that moisture on the other side by rubbing these together. And so these are gonna sit in the refrigerator overnight on this rack just to absorb our seasoning. And our seasoning today is gonna to be Mad Cow Rub from Postal Barbecue. Really, really good rub. Let's give everybody a good coating here. If you ever get your hands on beef chuck short ribs, really a good cut. They're, they're really like chuck roast in performance, so they take a little while, but they tend to have a little bit more moisture in them, I've found whereas chuck roast can have a tendency to dry out. I mean, anything from the chuck area, to me at least, I've found can have that tendency to dry out. So you gotta be careful with it. You gotta watch how you're cooking it. Wrap it if you want to. I'm definitely gonna be wrapping these. In fact, these are probably gonna get about two hours, maybe three of smoke before they go into a foil pan with some sauce, I'm guessing. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Maybe do some beef chuck short rib sliders. I don't know, I haven't decided. This was totally last minute here. I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna do with them. But it's definitely a happy accident to come upon these. You don't usually see these in prime. So that was another reason I wanted to grab them. Give them a last little shake here on top. I know this is a little rushed, but I'm actually running out of time today. I've got other things to do. So I wanted to get these in some rub. All right, these are looking good. They're gonna go in the refrigerator, just uncovered like this overnight. And tomorrow morning, after about 12 hours, I'll see you out at the SNS Girls Kettle. All right, the SNS Girls Kettle's up to temp. We're going for 250 to 300 today. I'll adjust my vents as necessary to keep us in that range. I have a piece of hickory on there, and I wanna go ahead and get these beef chuck short ribs on so I can step out of this smoke. Just wanna get a temperature probe into my largest one here, which is this one. That's just so I have sort of a reference to look at as we're getting closer to that stall, but really these are gonna take maybe two to three hours uncovered before we put them in a foil pan with some sauce. So let's get our lid on and get smoking. We'll check these in about an hour and see if we need to spritz. All right, we've been going one hour. Our internal temperature is about 140. These are small pieces, they're gonna move quickly. So let's give these a look, probably gonna spritz them. And the spritz I'm gonna be using is half water and half maple vinegar. You could use apple cider vinegar. Those are looking good. Just gonna give these a light spritz. Okay, I'm gonna get the lid back on, let these go for probably another hour before we get them in a foil pan, sauce them and cover them, let them finish to tenderize. All right, we're at the two hour mark. The internal temperature rise is really slowed down around 155-ish. So we're gonna go ahead, take these off, get them in a foil pan, give them some sauce, wrap them up, get them back on to finish. They're looking really nice. I also went ahead and added a fresh piece of hickory a while ago just for some more smoke, but let's get these wrapped. Go ahead and get our temperature probe out of here. Mm. 
And we will have to stack a couple of these, but that's all right. The barbecue sauce I'm using today is Smoky Mountain by Blues Hog. Get a little on here first, brush this around. Our last couple ribs in there, a little more sauce. Gonna add some of our spritzing liquid here. I think what I decided to do with these is I'm gonna make some boneless chuck short rib sliders. So let's get some foil on these, get it back on. It's probably gonna take another hour or two to tenderize. We'll give these a check for tenderness in about an hour. All right, we've been going three hours now. Let's go ahead and check our boneless beef chuck ribs. They're looking and smelling terrific. I'm just gonna do a tenderness check here. Feeling pretty tender, but you know, I think I want them to a little more tender. Still feeling a little resistance here. So I'm gonna let these go for another 45 minutes. I'm just taking a guess at that, but I think we'll be good. So we'll check them again in 45 minutes. All right, we've been going that additional 45 minutes, which puts us at three hours and 45 minutes, I think. Let's check for tenderness one more time. I think we're probably there, if not very close. It's again, smelling fantastic. Let's just see here. That <laughs> is very tender. And let's see, I don't know if you can see the temperature on there. That one's like, 211 this one right here 209 so we are good i'm gonna let those rest for about 15 minutes then we're gonna cut in and make some sliders all right here we are our beef chuck ribs have been resting for about 20 minutes actually i grabbed two of them here because i think that's what i'm gonna need to build about now uh, let's see five or six sliders i could probably use more if i need to but let's go ahead and cut in here i'm gonna slide one of these just out of the way so i can mess up my cutting board really good Oh, that is tender. Hey, <laughs> that is juicy and got a little bit of a smoke ring there. And really for these sliders, you can see this is fairly thin. We're not gonna cover the bun with one piece. So we're just gonna kind of layer and stack them and lace them, whatever we need to do. So let's cut some. These are gonna be good. And one of the things about anything with chuck, when you have chuck roast or chuck ribs like these, you could end up with some pieces that are dry. Save that juice that's in the foil pan or in the wrap, or whatever you used. It's great to just put on this as a little bit of an au jus. Really helps if you end up with any dry pieces. That postal barbecue rub, I've used it many times. It is fantastic. Just keep slicing. Get as many pieces as we can here so we can build our sliders. Let's go for an end hunk taste. That pretty much tastes like a burnt end. All right, I'm gonna finish slicing these. I'm gonna get our buns over here and then we'll build some sliders. So I'm just gonna build these on a plate right here and stack them and it's gonna be good. And I think we'll do kind of like two layers here on most of these, like that. Then I wanna go ahead and put a little more of that barbecue sauce we used. And I wanna put some pickled jalapenos cause I like that. And we'll top it. I'm gonna finish building a few more and then we will have a taste. So I have a nice little pile of sliders here and I'm just going to dive in. Let's see. That's a mighty fine beef rib slider. This was one of those things where I really didn't know what I was gonna make. And I think using cuts like this for sliders or barbecue beef sandwiches, if you're gonna shred them, is really a good thing. Chuck roast, as I mentioned, or any piece of that chuck part of the cow can dry out. There are tendencies to do that, especially if you overcook it. But this was prime to start with, so we were a little bit ahead of the game there. Wrapping it early, not letting it go, way beyond the stall does help. You get it in there with some moisture that helps retain some moisture. And all in all, I'm just 100% happy with these.